game did he watch? That did not seem to be the reaction I would have had to the game his team played. Dominique, I haven't had you here all week. What is your reaction to that? Did that seem in keeping with the game that his team played? No, but it seems in keeping with the time of year it is. Like, he spent much of the season being critical of particular players. Right now, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't make the team any better. You can't make anybody make any better decisions. Like, it's, it's like you're preparing for a test. You've done all the studying you could do. Now it's time for confidence. Now, no matter how dumb you've been all semester, your mom's got to come in there and say, man, you're the smartest little boy I know. You're going to go do the best job on this test because that's all you can have. The confidence will help them, but I think anyone who watched this game and participated in this game recognizes that they can't do anything the hell they want. They, they struggled against a team that's not very good and only lost because their kicker forgot how to kick. Yes, if you look at the, number, the amount of points the Vikings had been giving up leading into this game, you would not be impressed with the 26 that the Buccaneers put up on them. D. Wood, what did you see from Tampa on Sunday? <clears throat> Yeah, listen, Dan Bailey was the hero of that game <laughs> for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But one thing I will point out, uh, we talked about Scotty Miller a lot, okay, and, and how much time A.B. had been getting, when, you know, when he came aboard. Listen, he got – Scotty Miller got targeted twice. One was for a 48-yard touchdown. He get – his average yard per attempt going to Scotty Miller is more than any other receiver on that Tampa Bay um, Bucks team. So, I think the, this, uh, this offense operates better – with Scotty Miller in there as opposed to uh, Antonio Brown, and I think that's what they, need to do, what they need to do moving forward. You take a look at those numbers there, and you see it. Antonio Brown's numbers have not been significant. We talked a lot about whether he would be a good or bad influence there. Uh, this has nothing necessarily to do with his personality and maybe with the weapon that he is relative to what Scotty Miller has become. Dan Graziano, again, you covered that game last weekend. Did you get the vibe that the players on that team felt as good as their coach did afterwards? Maybe not quite as good, but they felt good. Look, I, I, talking to their players before the game, they were concerned about the Minnesota Vikings. They believed that Dalvin Cook was a significant threat and that he was different from any other run game they've faced this year. And sure enough, he ran for 71 yards in the first quarter against a team that only allows 74 rushing yards a game. So they were right. So I think at the end of that game, they felt like they had overcome something, right? They knew the Vikings were one game behind them in the standings. They had to do something. And they felt good about the way they came back from a rough start and played. So maybe Arians was reflecting that, but a little bit over the top in terms of we can do anything we want. It still seems like a mess with Brady trying to spread it around to a million different guys. But they knew they needed to win that game. They didn't think it was going to be easy. It came out feeling like they had done something, so maybe he was puffing out his chest a little bit on their behalf. We will see. Again, they have three games left, none of them against teams with winning records. Actually, they have Atlanta twice in their last three games, including this Sunday, so we will see. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.